Well, welcome, Yosef. Uh, good to see you again. You know, one thing I think we should start off with is um, Eternity Cloud. What is the problem we're trying to solve? So, kids, um, I think you, but also everybody, enjoys privacy. Now, privacy is a human right. Uh, with the digitalization and integration of everything and all this data and the, uh, of, the, of the cloud and also personal information, there is a danger that this information is not private anymore. We solve issues and we focus on issues that the cloud sector right now have around privacy and pri privately operating of um, data from, from users, small business, companies, government organizations. Thanks, Joseph. I think uh, this is a really good example. So um, back in the States a few years ago, there was a major privacy breach with a company called Equifax that uh, literally all Americans got breached. And this is the thought that when we're using cloud services, that because we're trusting things like Amazon or Azure or Alibaba, that things are secure. We find out that it's not. And that's what happens when we usually find breaches. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the core tenets of Ethereum Cloud, which is decentralization, privacy, anonymity, and highly, being highly available. How would, you, how would you describe those all working together for what Ethereum Cloud is doing? So one of the key aspects is the, the integration of blockchain. The blockchain offers transparency on the process of processing the, the data, the user's data. So the user's data, it, they're processed in a way where everybody can see transparently what is what happening with their information. Now, that was the key, that's one key aspect. The second key aspect which we solved by using confidential computing technology is the confidentiality of the information itself. So the information, it's, a, it's kept confidential during storage, during transmissions, but also during processing. So this offers a, a great opportunity for everyone to maintain their privacy while using cloud computing technologies. Yeah, I, I think this is good to use actually a cryptocurrency like Bitcoin example, because how can it both be anonymous but also fully transparent at the same time? Yes, so it's a, on one aspect is transparent because we want to have the process transparent, the whole process, but you want to have the data itself uh, private because the owner should be able to decide what happens with their information. So one thing I wanted to transition to in this, Yosef, is this thought, as we heard Kerry speak a little bit earlier, uh, that uh, the whole generation of mining in the sense of cryptocurrency or blockchain is carbon, uh, impacts the climate in a negative way. How would you describe that in what we're building with Ethereum Cloud? So this is uh, one key aspect. We already um, uh, uh, brought up into our project. Uh, it's environment impact. Uh, we see how this, uh, this impact, a global impact of such technology will drive down the price. However, we decided to take very good measures to make sure even where the price is low to offset the, the energy consumption with carbon dioxide certificates or something equivalent. Moreover, we just signed an agreement with Green Ant, which is another uh, organization we, we met uh, with Rutoza. Um, they, are, have, they have a, a farm uh, of trees in Thailand. So they are selling NFTs. For each tree, there is one NFT, which gives us credits. So we signed an agreement to, to work together and this way to maintain uh, Eternity Cloud um, with a big positive environment impact. Yeah, that, that's a good point. That's one of the things I've been seeing a lot of as we think about these uh, Web 3.0 and other technologies that companies like yours are looking for ways to positively offset the activities that they're engaged in. Um, one thing that's been really interesting with kind of the geopolitical global things that are happening, we're seeing that in terms of, let's say, 
Ukraine and Russia, that they're both using blockchain and crypto. Uh, how would your technology be used in a safe manner for any type of conflict? So, so far, I think the the the, 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 um, uh, the, the transparency of the ecosystem allows anyone to see who's doing what. Um, while, as I said, the data is private, but however, who has access to the data in the end can prove a lot of things that happened in the past. So I think this is a, a very good way of putting, similarly to, 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 to blockchain itself, uh, but also um, uh, to, to Bitcoin or uh, similar to Ethereum. But uh, this, uh, what we're handling, it's uh, computing uh, tasks and programs that can be proven they were um, run at a specific time. Yeah, well, I think this is also an important point because for those who've gotten to know me in the past conferences, I usually bring a question up when I'm talking about cryptocurrency and blockchain, which is simply this, if you don't have access to it for whatever reason, then you don't have it. And this is something where you, we heard about Elon Musk deploying Starlink. We've heard about, like I said, both sides for their own reasons engaging with crypto. How would the Therny Cloud actually be one of the solutions when I've just stated that if you don't get to it, you don't have it? Okay, so think about it as, a, as an additional layer. So you have an infrastructure layer, which for instance, Elon solves by putting the, 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 the Starlink uh, anywhere and uh, they didn't, anyone has access to internet now. Um, think about this as an, an additional layer of infrastructure for service, cloud services, which are decentralized and cannot be shut down um, easily. Um, hopefully, um, not at all. Thank you, Joseph. And, and that's something that is now coming as a solution. One thing I wanted you to really drill down upon is with a technology like a 30 cloud, the underlying architecture, what do you see the practical use cases? Today we've talked a lot, Dr. Lee had talked a lot about data, we, we talked about health data, other types of data. Where does the 30 cloud play into that? So use cases for a certain cloud are limitless. So any, any branch, any technology, any vertical can have and can use uh, a certain cloud as a, a backbone. Uh, for processing information. Now, our focus for now is uh, Web3 uh, applications and developers because they understand the base of decentralization. However, long term, we're looking for partners in healthcare because it's a great need there, and of, of, of course, uh, military or defense as well, and uh, government organizations. Thank you. And uh, one thing also I wanted to mention was what is the market opportunity for privacy? So for confidential computing alone, um, there is a 52 million market um, uh, uh, opportunity. Billion. A billion, sorry. <laughs> yeah, thanks for <laughs> 52 billion uh, market opportunity um, uh, in the next few years. Uh, I think that's 2026, uh, um, according to Everest Group uh, market analysis. Right, well, with just a few moments we have left, Joseph, what is something that you want to convey to why you're using the technology and how to implement? Uh, what I want to convey is more what we're doing with this technology and where the project is heading. Um, I want to say uh, part of our community is a big chunk of Russian-speaking Russian uh, members uh, and therefore um, we work with uh, trying to find a good solution with UNICEF to raise funds uh, from our community and um, try to help as much as we can. All right. Well, Yosef, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for sharing about what you're doing with privacy and I look forward to keeping on top of the project. Thank you very much, kids. All right. Thanks, everyone, and I hope you enjoy the break.